Bandwidth for MacBreak is brought to you by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. It's my pleasure to reintroduce Abba Shapiro, producer, director, trainer extraordinaire, all the way from uh, the Washington, D.C. area. Washington, D.C. Washington, is that how you say it? Washington, honest? yeah. Washington. And he's going to show us some more amazing uh, tips and tricks in Final Cut Studio. And today, I understand you're going to show us how to not use the three-way color corrector to improve your shots. Right, I want to not use the three-way color corrector. <laughs> Everything you've learned about three-way color, just throw it in. No, no, it's, it's a great application, but sometimes there's other things you can do to enhance a shot. And in this case, we're going to brighten up a shot without using the three-way color corrector. I actually have this open in the color corrector view so you can actually see the uh, luminance values of my shot. But I have this shot, and again, we're working with some footage from the folks at uh, Bungie, the Halo show, and the shot's just That's fine. That's funny, the Halo show. The Halo show. <laughs> I'm a big fan of this. Actually, Bungie was, uh, they designed a lot of stuff on the Mac, Marathon, if you recall. So what I want to do to brighten up this shot is I'm going to actually duplicate this shot onto the second layer. Now, to do this, you want to hold down the Shift key and the Option key, and you'll drag it. The Option key will actually duplicate the clip. The Shift key will keep it from moving left or right. So simply Shift, Option, Drag. And now I have an exact duplicate of the shot above itself, and it's in sync with itself. Perfect. And now we're going to use something called the composite mode. And you may be familiar with composite modes from other applications. And it's just a way of blending two images together. So what I want to do here is I want to choose a composite mode that's going to add some luminance to the shot. And there's a couple that you can try. And as a matter of fact, working with composite modes, a lot of times it can be a little bit of trial and error to see how well it works with the shot, depending on if the shot's really bright to start with or dark, or what you're trying to do to bring out the mids or whatnot. So I'm going to show you two examples. Uh, to get to the composite modes, the easiest way for me is I simply control click or right click on the clip on track two. Um, you're not holding down the control key. They moved it a little bit to the left, or maybe I, you moved the keyboard. I, I, I'm glad I have you around. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go down here, composite mode, and I can try the screen mode, and that's going to remove a lot of the dark information. Now, just for the, the audience, this, this, it looks a little like math. It says add, subtract, multiply. It all, it is if math. I'm not for, look, some people aren't very good at math. As soon as they see even add and multiply, it gets kind of scary. What's exactly happening when you're applying a composite mode? Uh, when you apply a composite mode, it's actually looking mathematically, and you don't have to know math to use it, at uh, the luminance values. Mm -hmm. Of a clip. You mean the brightness of the pixels? How bright, or how bright, or how dark a clip is. I like see. you're very luminous, right? And have a bright personality. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to simply do a screen mode, and it's doing some math where it's deleting a lot of the dark information, but retaining a lot of the light information, comparing it to the clip under it. And you always put a composite mode on the track above, or the second track, right? In this case. So we'll put the screen mode on. And you say instantly. Oh, wow, look at that. It, it just really brightened it up. Brightens up the shot. And as a matter of fact, you can create more layers and add more composite modes. Okay? Now, you can only add one composite mode per clip. So you can't say, oh, I'm going to add an add and an overlay. Okay? Got it. Because it's really doing math between just those two clips. Precisely. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the control button now that you've shown me where it is. And we'll go back to composite modes. And we'll take a look at the difference between that and the add button. Ooh. Brightened it up a little bit differently. But it looks like it's more saturated now has a different look, but we've also created a problem here. Um, when you use the add mode, it's actually adding uh, the white values, and we've exceeded 100% or 100 IRE. How do you know case. that? Well, I know this for two reasons. One, I just woke up with the idea this morning. <laughs> two, if I look at my scopes, I can see that they're above 100. A lot of times, if I'm using composite modes, I'll actually turn on my uh, luminance overlay. Okay, And that's the control Z key. Control Z. And oh, it looks have, like you're being yelled at by... Well, yes, we have the, the warning box. Okay, and so we want that. If you notice, if I went back to switch to my screen composite mode... You don't get it. I don't get it. I get the little check mark, which says, good job, Abba. So what you're, what you're uh, basically saying here is, depending on what composite mode you use, either screen or multiply, you need to be mindful of your luminance because you could exceed broadcast safe. Absolutely. And thereby get your program rejected from broadcast and never work in this town again. I don't, I don't deal with rejection well. <laughs> Not yeah, at we, all. No, I... None of us do. <laughs> um, but in this case, maybe I did like the fact that the colors were more saturated. So in that case, I could simply go back. I would use the add mode. And then maybe I would simply select the clip and throw a broadcast safe on it. All right, I so see. Nested and throw a broadcast safe. Great. Now you were going to show us a trick 
to uh, when you play back. So because a lot of times you want to check um, the the luminance level for the entire clip, not just not, the play is only parked at one spot there. You want to be able to play it for the whole clip. And, and right check now, it. in this case, the whole clip is too bright. Got but it. let's say we're in a situation where it's not. I'm going to fake this. I'm going to simply bring up the opacity. And this is something else you can do when you start working with um, composite modes. Right. Is if you want to modify them, they're an all or nothing situation. But if you start tweaking the opacity level of the clip above, you can affect the way the composite mode looks. So let's go ahead and turn on the clip overlays. We'll get down here to the little mm -hmm. bottom, toggle clip overlays, option mm -hmm. W. Mm -hmm. And we see there's now a little black line here. And as I bring down the opacity of the top clip, I can affect how brighter or not the clip is. I see. Oh, it's getting darker. But I notice you're still, I'm still not my lit, whites legally. Are, my legally. whites are getting blown out. Okay. So I'm a little bit uh, stuck here. So let's go ahead, and what we're going to do is we're going to do something very dramatic. I'm going to simply hold down the Option key, put a couple of keyframes in, and I'm going to keyframe the luminance values up. So here, it's ah. not on at all. And now if I hit play, I can watch in my scopes, and I can see the luminance values, but I've lost my overlay. I see. So you can't tell at what frame you're in an illegal situation. That's correct. But okay. this is a great little trick. First time, heard first time here. First time here. Okay, option P, okay, oh, Okay. Is, we'll play back frame by frame. And it's something we use so we don't have to go to real time. So it's like option key, P, a RAM playback? It's a RAM playback. And it won't necessarily play back at uh, 30 frames a second, but you'll be able to play back fairly quickly. And if I wanted to play back a little quicker, I could render this first. Oh. And if you okay. notice right there, I saw it when it went too hot. So you can, you can locate the exact frame as it's playing back. Right. And I use this not just in composite modes. If I'm you know, finishing a show and I want to see if a frame gets too hot, I will literally render the whole show out, hit Control P, watch it, and if I get a flash frame with the exclamation point, I know I need to go in and fix a few frames of that shot. That's great. So there you have it. There's a quick way using composite modes, Option P, to uh, basically bring the luminance of your video down so your show will not be rejected by the network. Because nobody likes rejection. <laughs> nobody does. Thanks, anyway, Steve. thanks for watching MacPix Studio. I'm Steve Martin with Abba Shapiro.